But while I was in Puerto Rico, I had these missed calls from a, a number, and it was a lady, and she was leaving me voicemails saying that she was with the FBI. And I was, like, freaking out, and I was like, this has to be a scam or something. So I deleted the messages. So I come back to town, and my mom tells me that someone passed by the house looking for me, saying that they are with the FBI. And I was like, what? <laughs> I had these voicemails. I was freaking out. So I called the number back. Welcome to Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Here's your host, Marcus. Welcome to another episode of Secrets of a Sugar Daddy. Today with me as my co-host is my assistant, Lily. Happy Friday Eve. Happy Friday Eve. Well, Friday you know. Junior. Yeah, but you don't know when people are listening to this. They could be listening to it on a Monday. Oh, that's true. Yeah, so we can't get too specific on dates. Happy day. <laughs> there you go. So I have some news for you. Uh, anybody that heard our last episode, Lily had a great episode. Um, that, that was a lot of fun doing that one. But you might have heard me sounding like death with my voice. I had COVID. <laughs> yes, yes, he did. And guess who has co- had COVID right after me? Guess who's a giver? Yeah, Lily. I think I got it from Vegas, playing poker in Vegas. I don't know. I got COVID. My other um, assistant, my uh, project manager, Kimmy, got it. She went up to Seattle and <laughs> she just called us today. Her whole family has COVID. <laughs> so I, I feel partly responsible Why for it. Why is this it. hilarious? I don't know. This isn't good news. No, it's not good. But You're it, enjoying this way got, too much. I got over it really quickly, though. So I got my voice back. I really appreciate that. Thank you, uh, podcast gods, for letting me have my voice back this week. And Lily, she, you're almost back to normal. Yeah, I'm probably about 85, 90%. Here's the crazy thing before we get to our guest today. Lily has been asked out on so many dates and men, and she tells them, I have COVID. And what do they say? I don't care. I don't care. Oh, well, really? <laughs> men, no. Men, they, I don't give two shits. Yeah, they just want the opportunity. They really when don't even care. When can I see she, you? Yeah, they don't uh. even care. Yeah, I don't know. Get me affected. Just let's go out on a date. Anyway, we will move on from that as we are all getting better and our voices are back. And I actually had somebody message me, uh, I don't know, a week or two ago. And I contacted her and she is on the show from Florida. So welcome, Emily. Hi, how are you? It's Emily, right? Hi, Emily. Hi. Emily. Oh, okay. <laughs> I have low <laughs> Miss Emily. Well, you know, when you have COVID, you got short term memory loss. <laughs> it's the best excuse. So, Emily, let's get a little bit of background on you. I don't know. I, I did briefly speak to you on the phone, but then I stopped you because I didn't want to ask you too many questions. So what is your age? So I'm 28 right now, and I joined Seeking when I was 21. Okay, so you've been on and off the site for about seven years? Yeah. So what prompted you to get on a sugar baby, sugar daddy website like that? I mean, that's kind of scandalous, right? It is, but I don't know. I think for Miami, it's a little mild. <laughs> oh, yeah, Miami, yeah. Now, have you always lived down there, or where did you grow up? Yeah, I'm from here oh okay okay so yeah miami's kind of a crazy place lots of money flying around you know i was in my mba program 20 years ago and my teacher used to work for the federal reserve he told me and i don't know how accurate this is he told me that 80 percent of all u.s currency is outside of the u.s which i believe that right out of the 20 percent of the currency that's in the u.s 80 percent of it resides in miami would you say uh, there's a lot of balling going on down there? There is a lot. I, nothing surprises me anymore. Yeah, Miami's a place. And, I, and obviously, for those who haven't figured out why there's so much currency in Miami, it's from the huge drug trade that comes through that part of the world. But anyway, so there is a, a it, Miami's a very interesting culture. That's for sure. So you got on the, you got on Seeking, I assume? Yeah, so I joined Seeking. Um, I had always kind of had this idea of, like, the sugar daddy, sugar baby world. Like, I had heard about it through friends. Uh, Everybody hears about once, it through a friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I actually heard about it through a guy friend. Oh, yeah? He had told me he knew a girl who was on this website, um, and she was making this amount of money for going for lunch. And I was like, what? What is this? Wait, sign me up so for I that program. Out. Yeah, I was like, okay, I could, I could do with some extra cash. So I was 
too scared to get on. So I convinced my friend to get on. So I literally drove her to her date <laughs> and waited outside for her. And you're like ready to quiz her on how everything went. <laughs> yeah. So she went on a couple of dates and it was fun. It was fine. She had a good time. I actually ended up meeting one of the people that she met the first couple of times. And after that, she found an arrangement and she was with the guy for like two years. So wow. once I saw that she was getting into an arrangement, I decided to join for myself. And try it out. Yeah, so you joined at 21, and then tell us about your first few experiences. How did it go? So I met a few people for like coffee and like a drink or lunch, and I think it was the second guy that I met. He had told me that he was married, but his wife knew about it. They always so say he that. Was like, no, that's what I thought. So <laughs> then we go. We're like, let's meet for lunch. So we go meet for lunch, and his wife is there. Are you serious? His even, wife showed up. He didn't even tell me she was going to be there. He didn't even tell me. That's yeah. awkward. That's really awkward. Crazy. So and I, as soon as I see them, they know it's me. And I'm like, I can't leave now. <laughs> so I sat down, had a drink with them. And they're like, let's go back to our place or whatever. And I was like, what am I getting myself into? Oh, like, I you're like, up am I going to survive this ordeal? <laughs> okay, wait. So they just assumed that you would be interested in a threesome? So it wasn't a threesome. So they, they were new to the site and I was new to the site, but they said they had met a girl before me, but they, the wife didn't like her. So she basically met me, was like, okay, I approve. And then we went back to their place. We like hung out by the pool and then she left. And then he's like, oh, this is the part where you and I can hook up now. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. That's a new yeah, one. It was, it was crazy. And, I, and so then she comes back after too. And then we had another drink and then I headed out. Interesting. And how and did you really enjoy that experience? Yeah, it was fun. I, I wasn't even 21 yet. I think I was like 20 and my my birthday was the week after. And he gave me a thousand dollars. And then the week of my birthday, he gave me a new iPhone because he saw my phone was like so old and broken. Oh, nice. And yeah, like he was super nice and she was super sweet. And they they were like high school sweethearts and they had been together for like 10 years. So I ended up seeing him for about a year. So that was one of your first sugar baby experiences. I yeah. have a question. So you yeah. saw him for about a year. Did you see the wife as well, like just for chats and hanging out? Yeah. So it was. You it was became such a friends. Weird situation. Yeah. Yeah, we were be friends, and she she liked me, and she would like take me shopping with her sometimes, and like after my advice, and sometimes we'd have a glass of wine, and then she would leave. Like it was. It was weird. Or if she was out of town, I was the only person allowed to come over. So how much older was she than you? Like 12 years. It wasn't, I think they were 32. Okay. My sister and 21. Wow. Yeah. They Interesting. Were, they were pretty, yeah. They had only been married a year, but they were together like 10, 11 years. Yeah. So they were trying to spice things up a little bit. Did they have children? They didn't. Okay. Interesting, huh? Yeah. That's, okay. That's a really so unusual story. Did you continue to date other people during that or were you exclusive to them i was exclusive to them just because the other people i had met on the site were a little crazy and <laughs> i was so young at the time. yeah <laughs> and i was working full time like a nine to five so i didn't really have time and i would see him like twice a month so. twice a month did he yeah. just pay you every time he saw you or did he put you on like a weekly yeah. allowance or anything no he always just gave me when he saw me yeah that makes it easier know when he me again so, but he would give me extra sometimes or buy me gifts. Like he was very generous. It wasn't really like, like about the money for him. He just wanted to help me out. So wh how, why did that relationship end? So a year later, he was kind of getting flaky on me and he had canceled maybe six times. And I was kind of getting annoyed. I'm like, what the hell? Like you keep canceling. As I'm walking out the door, I'm like, I'll be there in 30 and he's canceling on me. Oh, that's annoying. And like, I was already dressed and walking out the door. Sometimes I was on my way there already, like, texting him on my way. So he actually, I get there one day, and he tells me we got a divorce. <laughs> oh. So, Whoops. He's like, that's why I've been flaky. But then he kind of went through, like, a whole thing, like, getting a divorce, like, thinking a lot and calling me at, like, 3 in the morning. So I ended up ending it at that point. Yeah. And rejoining the site. Probably smart. All right. So you were now a little bit experienced, maybe a little wiser. How did your second time go on the site? So 
so I got back on. I met a couple of people, but I didn't really have any luck. I think the guys were just like looking for a hookup, especially in Miami. It's like a very transient city. So everybody's either here for a short period or just in for the weekend or something. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of hard to find somebody steady. The guys were like, hey, I'm in town once every two months, you know? Yeah. It didn't really work for like what I needed at the time. Mm-hmm. And so I ended up. <laughs> Another crazy story I have in the middle of everything else. This guy messaged me and he wanted to meet up, but he had already had a sugar baby and basically wanted someone to entertain her. And I was like, okay, well, I haven't had any luck with the guys on the site. Why don't I give this a shot? So So he sends me her number. Entertain her. What does that mean? Define entertain her. Like hang out by the pool at hotels. He comes after work, meets up with us, we have dinner, whatever. Maybe it would be like a light threesome by curious, you know, <laughs> by curious. It's, it's not it's not really like a threesome. You know, you know how guys are. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like if it's all in their head in Miami. So I was like, OK, why not? But they kept canceling on me. We never ended up meeting up, but he did pass along her number and her and I um, had a phone chat and we got on really well. So I ended up moving on from that. A couple months later, she messages me. She's in town and she like she just moved back to Miami. She had left and then she came back um, because she was from up north. And we meet up for a drink finally. And we became best friends and we're still best friends to this day. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah. You know, it's amazing the people that you meet on the site that you become really good friends with and who actually become a big part of your life. She's having a kid now with a guy she met on SA. Like they've been together for like two years now. Oh, so she found a, and she got pregnant and they're having a baby? Yeah. And when is she coming on the show? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I told, her, I told her about the show. I'm like, you have to hear this show. It's so good. Yeah. And she has amazing stories. So she, when I had met her, she was on and off with somebody for a few years who was a billionaire. A like billionaire? She, a billionaire. The stories she told me were crazy and I, I couldn't believe imagine. it. I imagine. And she would send me pictures with like hundred thousand dollars in cash. She's like, "Oh, I'm in Vegas." Like, wait, wait, wait. It was crazy. Is this a guy she met on the site? She met him on the site. Yeah. Wow. But really long. On before me, she's like five years older than I am, so she was on even before I was. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. And there, there are billionaires on the site. There are. Oh yeah. I don't know if anymore, but there, they used to be. No, I'm still hearing stories. I'm still I'm hearing stories. I'm still looking. She. Lily's looking. Where's, looking. where's my billionaire? <laughs> yeah, but those guys are crazy. Yeah, more than likely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a very toxic relationship with her and him. But either way, she still kind of gave me advice. So I wasn't having any luck on the site. And she was like, I was told her I had a date coming up. So she's like, okay, don't ask for anything about money. Don't talk about money. Just, you know, have a good time. Enjoy it and see how it goes. And I said, okay. And so I go on the date. The guy was from abroad he was european and so we meet up for dinner he had ubered me there and i was so nervous that on the way there i was like i didn't want to go anymore but he ubered me so i was was halfway in the uber yeah that's right (laughs) so i get there and he's actually very attractive i hadn't even seen his face yet he had only sent me like body pictures and like cut out his face so he's very attractive you know he's european very intelligent he was funny we had a good time and then we didn't even talk about money but he gives me money before i leave you know we had hooked up we had a great time but he wanted me to stay over and i i kind of have this thing where i don't like to stay over people's houses especially if i don't know them so i ended up going home and so he gives me money but it was a very low amount <laughs> oh really and I was like, yeah it was like three hundred dollars i was like wow okay so I was like, I'm not going to see him again. Then he messages me again the following week. He was still in town. And I was like, you know what? Like, I don't have anything else to do. I'm just going to (laughs) go. We get together again. I was like, we get together again. And ended up seeing him for like three, four years. Three or four years. I'm assuming the financial help increased but but by that time. It did. (laughs) Yeah, significantly, I hope. By By the third, fourth time. It went up, and I was like, thank God, because I was like, I'm not going to do this thing. So he was from Europe or wherever. Was he traveling there, or was he staying in Miami? So he didn't have a place, but he had just bought a place. 
why he still had to put furniture and everything. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of fun. I got to help him like do that. Um, nice. Like, pick out couches and all these things and move into the house. It was kind of weird at first. I didn't realize how much money he had because when we first met, he was staying at a friend's apartment that they didn't use. It was like a two-bedroom apartment. So we would stay there and then he didn't even have a car. He borrowed his friend's car. He borrowed his friend's boat. I was like, does this guy have any money? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then turns out he had a lot and he had to buy this like $10 million house and he has like, you know, all the fancy cars, not just one, several. And I'm like, wow, okay. Like I, I was new to this world. I didn't know any of these things. I didn't even know what a Bentley was. <laughs> right. What, what did he do for a living? How did he make his money? He worked in auto world, like cars. So okay. He was very into like the whole like auto and, industry. And how much older was he th- than you? So he lied about his age. <laughs> oh, really? By about 10 years. Yeah. Oh, that's and happened to me. Known, I probably, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like if they lie about their age, that's the first red flag. So how, <laughs> how, how old did he say he was and how old was he really? He said he was late 40s and he turned out to be late 50s. Really? Late 50s. Yeah. And, and I, that's a I big was, difference. Th- yeah, I had only had an arrangement with thirty a thirty two year old. So yeah, for me that was like dumb. So he's late fifties, and how to... old were you? I was twenty three, just turning twenty four. Wow, that's a huge so that's age a, gap. Yeah, big over thirty year age gap. Yeah, yeah. thirty three. Yeah. yeah. Did you find yourself connecting with him though, or did you have a hard time? You know, with some of the when he would talk about you know some things from his youth or his era. So, no, we actually, I feel like he was kind of like a kid inside. So it wasn't that hard to connect. It kind of made me change. It changed my whole view on dating, actually, because now I can't date guys under like 48. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Now guys under 50 are too young for you. That's funny. It's crazy because I can't I go back now. Like I, I meet guys my age and can't. I can't take them seriously. Even if they're successful, I can't take them seriously. Right. They're so immature. So it kind of did change my whole mindset on the whole dating thing. And as far as arrangements now, it's the same. I, I can only date older. Well, I've, for some reason, I've talked about this. My last few arrangements have, have been all been in their lower 20s, which is fun. I, I enjoy the youth I, and I'm very energetic. And even though I'm in my 50s, you know, I can hang with them, right? It's, the question is, can they hang with me? That's the question. But there are generational differences and I've, I've brought this up before, but one time I was talking to one of them and I was telling them about my family dynamic and we were kind of a Brady bunch type of a family. You know, we had a kind of an intermixed family and she looked at me and she says, I, I don't know who the Brady bunch is. <laughs> so do, oh you, <laughs> do you, Emily know who the Brady bunch is? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just checking. But that was a real slap in the face because I'm thinking, oh, wow, I just, I mean, I get it. Yeah, 30 years age difference. And granted, she said she did grow up without TV and and lived a very sheltered life. So there was just so many things I would bring up and she didn't know what I was talking about. So it it, it had its few challenges being that big of a difference. But I really, really enjoyed the youth. The other challenge, and let me ask you this, if, if this was ever a problem, did it ever feel like people were looking at you, like judging you because of the big age difference? Because I get that a lot. Yeah, that I think was a huge thing to overcome going out in public. At first, I was just in it for the benefits. So I didn't really have feelings for him until like six months in. So it was hard. Like he'd want to hold hands and I was like, oh my God, I'm like, someone's texting me. <laughs> exactly, right? I can completely relate to that. I had yeah. a very similar situation. Same thing happened. Uh, the guy on his profile, I'm in my 50s. And so the guy on his profile said he was 65. And come to find out he was 75. Which is a, a huge difference. And he acts 75. <laughs> and he wanted to hold my hand and I felt creepy like I was holding hands with my grandfather. Oh, that's so bad. <laughs> Yeah, but Emily, so I had this really interesting situation happen to me a couple weeks ago. I, I was I took this 21 year old to a concert and she was really tired. She'd had a long day and I had put my arm around her and, and she really wasn't that responsive. Right. And because actually I, I caught her dozing off during the concert. We were in chairs 
but she she looked like she was 18. She just had this baby face. Even though she was 21, she looked like she was 18. I'm in my 50s. So, and I told her right up front, I said, I feel weird. Walk, I, I want to hold your hand. I want to put my arm around you, but it just fe- like, I just know people are looking and judging us. And so anyway, but it was easy to do at the concert. So we're walking out of the concert. We're walking almost into the hallway. This lady comes and grabs her arm, says, come to the bathroom with me. And we turn around and we're like, what? And the lady's like pulling her arm, come to the bathroom with me. And we're like, why? She goes, are you okay? Are you all right? Evidently, I must have looked like some sex trafficker or some creepy old man. I mean, she was there with me. (laughs) And I think the lady was sitting behind us or something, thought I was trying to make this move on this young girl. (laughs) And anyway, it just creeped us out the whole rest of the night. We're just like, what was wrong with that lady? And I guess she thought like you were just creeping on me or something. I don't know. It was just, you know, you come across those situations when you have a 30 year age difference, I guess. I could definitely feel people staring at us when we go out to dinner and stuff. Mm -hmm. But even the waiters, it was kind of embarrassing. But then at at a certain point, then, you know, he he was super funny and very outgoing. Everybody loved him. So once you start talking to him, like, then the waiters, like, loved him by the end of the night, you know? Yeah. So we we always had a good time. I don't know. It did become toxic at a certain point. Oh, Um, what happened? Honestly, (laughs) I look back and I think he was a narcissist. And... It kind of makes sense, everything that he did. You know, he would lie a lot, gaslighting me. Looking back, I do feel that he was. But I don't think he was a bad person. I just think it's just the way he was, you know. Who ended the relationship? So it was like on and off for a bit. He and I broke up maybe like four times. But we always ended up getting back together. You know, the chemistry was just there. And I think when you when it ended, we were both like sad about it. But then we'd go out and date other people and then... You know, isn't that funny? Like when you're with somebody for a long time and then you break up and you go date other people, you're just always kind of wishing that you had that connection with this new person. You're just like, ah, it's just not the same. And that's kind of what draws us back to our exes. Exactly. Like I never really got that because another thing going into this so young, I've never been in an actual relationship. I had done like a hookup with a guy for like a couple of years, but he was like a friend. So I've never actually been in a real relationship. Mm-hmm. And after this, I don't think I can ever be in a normal relationship. <laughs> I think if I do, it's probably going to be from somebody I meet off the site. Yeah. Now that you were with him for, you said, three to four years, did, did you actually fall in love with the guy? I did. And I feel like I kind of knew early on after maybe six, eight months. I knew I wanted to be like exclusive with him. Like I, I did like him. And, and I said something. He's like, oh, like, I don't know what I want. You know, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't see where this is going. And I was like, okay, well, then let's just end it because then it's just going to get complicated, right? But he didn't want, he didn't want to end it, and I was going to leave that night, and he was begging me to stay. So I ended up staying, and after that, it was, I just fell in love with him after that. Because we get a lot of questions from listeners and from people that are not in the lifestyle of what happens when the feelings get involved in, a, in an arrangement type of a relationship. It just became a mess, to be honest. But (laughs) I think if he had actually wanted the relationship, then it would have been different. He played a lot of games. He was always lying about stupid little things that I would find out later, who he was with. And, you know, he all his friends were on the site as well. Oh, they were. So, yeah. So I would meet the girls that they would find on the site. So I I made friends and, and they all liked me. So they would tell me, oh, he's in town or... He brought some other girl from another country. Oh, and so that's this. how you would find out. That's how I would find out. It's not like I, I was there, but I would hear about it even when I didn't want to hear about it. I'm like, don't tell me anything, but they would <laughs> keep telling me. Yeah. <laughs> I saw so, a funny meme. It says, hey, do you know what your ex did last night? And it says, um, no, don't tell me. No, what did it say? Remember I showed you that one? Yeah. It's a pretty good. It's a pretty good one. I I think TikTok. I've seen TikToks like that though, and it's like when when he leaves his phone in the car, and then they just flip it over. Oh and yeah. Like, I choose that. <laughs> I saw I saw that actual TikTok where they flip the phone over. Like, yeah, I don't want to ruin this relationship. <laughs> I know I the choose- phone is a dangerous thing. I've found myself looking at a girlfriend's phone. She left it open. Actually, she was so drunk. She handed it to me and said, "Here." I want you to find a song or something on there. And she fell asleep. 
<laughs> and here I have an open phone in my hand and she's snoring and I'm thinking, do I or don't I? Because I know I'm not going to find anything good here. And of course, I swiped a few things and of I, I found a lot of shit that I shouldn't have found. And it was very bad. <laughs> it was very bad. You hurt your own feelings. <laughs> oh, yeah. But here, here's that say. It's funny. It's like, I really hate when people say, guess what your ex is doing? Uh, no, thanks. I had to do that while we were together. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds uh, a little bit like that was the situation for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was just a lot of games. And I, I think if he was upfront about it, then I would have been like, okay, that's fine. You can, you know, see other people and I'll see other people. The problem is he was also very insecure and jealous. Mm -hmm. So even if the waiter was being too nice, he would get in a mood for like two hours. Oh, are you serious? So jealousy jealous? issues. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was insane. We'd be out of town and like we, he had a business dinner and I was, sitting at the pool bar and this guy won't leave me alone he's like offering to pay for my drinks and follows me around and I texted him and told him and he's like oh well you can go have dinner with him if you want instead well, and see he was <laughs> it was just like he was seeing other women behind your back yeah but it's not okay for you well I was course. married to a man exactly the same way <laughs> I get it <laughs> he was a prolific cheater Ooh. but had I ever stepped out it, we would have been done it's just a double standard. Yeah. And I think that yeah. is no, a little I, narcissistic. You might be right. Yeah, it's abuse. And and you would get in a bad mood, so it, w it would ruin the, the yeah. trip or the night. Okay, so you moved on from that one. How long ago did that end? So that ended, I would say, like a year, year and a half ago. So you're a year, year and a half removed. There's still, there's still feelings, though. It, it, it takes a while to completely move on. I don't know that you ever completely yeah, move on, but yeah. There's some sleepless nights and some tossing and turning, and I know how it goes. <laughs> What's funny to me is that he's been on that site every day since we ended it. <laughs> oh, he has. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, what about you? Whatever. I've been on and off. I took a break afterwards for a while to mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, get my together. I did great. Work was amazing, and um, like my career excelled. I lost so much weight. <laughs> I got so fit. Like in a healthy way, not in a bad way. Well, that's good. And I on the site, and all, all these guys are like, "Well, you're so fit, you know." And now I feel like now I know what to look for, and now I'm kind of attracting more of like a healthy type of person, and yeah. that wants to travel. I I want to do you know fun things. Well, one of one of my guest co-hosts a few weeks ago, Kimmy, talked about her toxic relationship, and even though it was a bad situation, it does teach you kind of now what you are looking for and what you want out of life and what you want out of a man. So she, it's funny because she says, now I meet men and I can tell autumn, I can tell quickly that <laughs> this is a red flag man right here. You know, he reminds me too much of my ex. Exactly. And even now, like hear other stories about other people dating and I can tell right away, I can give them advice, help my friends out. Cause now I know, I've experienced it before. I didn't even notice it. I'm just like, you know, it's just like a happy 21 year old living her life. Yeah. And then I met a narcissist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So have you, have you been on but other dating sites or is this the only one that you've done? Prior to being on this site, I had only been on Tinder. Like it had just come when I had joined and I met this guy that was at a university near uh, where I live. And we, we had like a hookup for like a couple of years and we're still friends to this day. Like he moved to another state. I think he's in Chicago now and mm -hmm. we're, you know, we keep in touch. Um, and no, mostly it's just been that site to be honest. Cause every time I try to get on Bumble or Hinge, you know, it's not what I'm looking for exactly. And it's hard to go backwards, isn't it? Like, it feels like you're going backwards. Yeah. Like it's not exciting. It's not fun. <laughs> and I can't date guys my age anymore. <laughs> right. You can't date. I know Lily is getting people asking her out now from Facebook dating and she's gone out. You've gone out with Facebook dating. You've gone out with Tinder dates. Have you done any Bumble or Hinge? Um, I just explored that briefly and I didn't like it and I shut it right down. So yeah. I, I didn't actually ever date anyone from those sites. Do, so what do you find the, big, the biggest difference between SA dates and then those other sites? Do, do you talk to them differently? Because I feel like on Seeking, like when I meet somebody on Seeking, I, I just have a different rapport with them. And we kind of have a, a different understanding of what, er, what everything is about. I don't think I talk to them differently. I think I'm just a really genuine person. So I always am really straightforward and open with people. 
on essay, you really have to fill people out and figure out what their interpretation is of the site and what they're looking for from the site because there's just such a variety and discrepancy between what people are looking for and hoping Mm -hmm. for. Emily, have you found that the site's changing a little bit? Because I'm hearing that from a lot of guests and co-hosts. Yeah. So when I first got on, it was maybe like 2014 and there wasn't that many guys on there. So I think it was the guys that were on there were, you know, very successful and were serious about having an arrangement. So it was much easier to find someone with a couple meetings. Mm-hmm. Now everyone's on it. There's so many girls and so many guys on it, like everybody. Now, do you find that there's a lot of guys that are just basically pretending to have yeah. money and success? Yeah, definitely. I think you kind of have to know like what to look out for, even just by a few messages I can tell what I like and what I don't like. And as soon as they give the wrong response, I'm like, okay, next. You so know, what's, I a, feel like, what's a giveaway for somebody that you think doesn't really have the goods to back up what they're saying? I don't know. For me, it's all, it's also, it's not just about the backing up the goods. I mean, I think I can already tell that through their profile, you know, based on their photos and what they've written and then talking to them on the phone or, or meeting them for a coffee. I can pretty much tell right away, like what kind of person they are. I feel like I'm pretty good at reading people. I think once I talk to them, if I, if I get as far as meeting them, you know, they have a good chance, like having an arrangement with them. But the thing with Miami is that it's hard here because there's so many guys with money here. So you, you really have to just meet them and then take it from there. Do you ever FaceTime Um, them first? I have like twice, but I don't know. I feel like people are more likely to just meet you in person. I think they're kind of scared of, FaceTime or they use like a burner phone, you know, everyone's cautious now. So what kind of messages get through to you that you would agree to go meet somebody? What, what, what are the men saying that you like enough to take that chance and go meet them? Cause you're, you know, I can see you, you're very attractive. I'm sure you get a ton of messages. You've got a great look too. Yeah. I think for me, as long as, you know, they spell correctly and <laughs> can <laughs> And they can chat, keep a conversation going, then, you know, I'm, I'm open to meeting them. Mm-hmm. I do find, though, that it, it is a lot of the same people on the site in Miami, at least. So from when I first got on, there's the same people. Like, they have the same photos, or maybe <laughs> they change their photo, but it's the same people on there. Yeah. So I already know who's on there forever and who's new. So I tend to meet guys that are new to the site more. Do you ever have someone that you start talking to and you feel like you have a pretty great rapport and then just suddenly they disappear and they ghost you? Yeah, definitely. And it makes me wonder if they if they were real or if they met somebody else. Well, and then sometimes months later, they'll reach out again out of the blue. Yeah, that just happened to you. That just happened to me. Yeah. I have a date tonight with a guy that I was talking to probably like four or five months ago and then I just stopped hearing from him. So, and then I'll, wham, I'll let you know out of the blue, let you know what happens with you're, that. You're going to go to a restaurant that I was at last night. So that yeah. I, I want to report. And also, do you find that a lot of the men on this site are just kind of using it as a fetish site? Like they have real specific fetishes and I don't know, maybe they're willing to pay for that experience because they can't experience it in the civilian world. I haven't gotten that. But when I first joined, I did. My inbox was full of crazy messages, BDSM, step on me, pee on me, <laughs> all, right. all these weird messages. But I haven't gotten that in years. So, And I also tend to have a resting bitch face in my pictures. Oh, resting bitch face. So I'm like, face. maybe yeah. I can get lost like a dominator. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So guys ask you for that? Well, they she hasn't got it. Anymore. Yeah, she hasn't got oh, it in okay. a while. Oh. For some reason, Lily gets this all the time. I get she gets all the weirdos. She'll she'll read her messages to me and they're even shocking to me. And I thought I've seen most everything. You know, I'm a magnet for weirdos. What can I say? Us men, I tell you. Maybe maybe something in your profile. Maybe you need to like proofread. I don't know because Marcus has read my profile and it's very straightforward and very vanilla. Yeah. And very traditional, I would say. Yeah. There's literally nothing risque in any of my photos or my wording on my profile. Not even flirtatious, I don't think. Now, I read a profile this morning, and I think I even read it to you. 
the, and of course I'm going to respond to this profile differently because she says not looking for sex on the first date, unless you want to want me to wrap my legs around your head. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, okay, (laughs) well, I think it's pretty clear what, uh, what would get you going. But, um, I thought that was an interesting item in their profile. As far as guys ghosting, I do have a crazy story. I met, I did meet this guy, you know, very young and successful. He was probably like 38, 39. We meet for a drink, and then the second time around, we go on an actual date. And he's like, "Oh, I'm going to give you five thousand dollars a month as your allowance." I was like, "Okay, great." And he sends it to me directly, like a direct, like he automatically transfers it to me. He ghosted me after that. <laughs> That's weird. What? So he gives you $5,000 yeah. and never contacts you again? And never contacts me again. And I was like, what happened to this guy? Where is he? I want more. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I yeah, you're like, I just. With him. We had. Wow. And so, okay. So you went yeah. out with him once? Twice. We met once for like lunch or coffee or something. And then the second time was an actual date. We went to like a basketball game and you had like courtside seats and we had a really great time. And uh, then, and he gave me the money, like he transferred it. And then he was like, oh, I don't like it to be transactional. So I just, you know, I'll give it to you now. And then we just forgot about it until next month. And I was like, okay, great. That sounds perfect. And he just ghosted me. Did you try to contact him? He, I think he had like a fake number, but yeah. I did see him on the, like a year later and I sent him a message and he responded and he was, and he called me, he gave me his number and we talked and he was like, I'm so sorry. I was going through a lot with like my ex. And, you know, I, I just couldn't date anybody and I should have said something and he <laughs> like apologized. Wow. But we didn't end up being other because he, he had like a toddler and he really wanted someone that wanted to like be a mom. Mm-hmm. That's a crazy story. I know. That's a deal breaker for me too. Was that a toddler? Yeah. yeah. Well, at my age, I'm yeah. in my grandmother's stage. Yeah. I yeah. don't, I don't want to raise someone's small children right now. Yeah. Well, I know I've dated a few girls with toddlers. I don't mind because I know that they're going to grow up fairly quickly, but it is a challenge. Yeah, I'd rather their kids be like at least over five or six or seven, something like that. Um, But I don't mind. I mean, it it comes with the territory. There's going to be lots of single moms out there. But um, that's so interesting, though, that he gave you five grand and then he just basically was going through stuff. I know that we interviewed this doctor out of San Diego, but the opposite happens to him. He gave a couple girls $4,000 for a monthly allowance, and then they ghosted him. <laughs> he couldn't get a hold of them again. <laughs> so uh, that kind of sucked for him. But So I've heard that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that a lot from guys that you know, they don't, they hear stories from friends or, you know, they've given girls money and they disappear, so they don't do that. So yeah. I feel like it always does start mm-hmm. out as like a pay-for-me kind of thing. So I have tried it all. I have tried the monthly allowance. I have tried the weekly allowance. I have tried the per visit allowance. I just have not had any success on a monthly or weekly allowance. I don't know why. It just, for me, I'm just going to have to stick it per visit We allowance. talked about this earlier. Yeah. In the car. You're right. too busy. Well, and, th- and then the girls get too busy too. And then yeah. we start feeling like, wait a minute, I gave you this for the week and now we were supposed to meet twice a week and then you're, you've been sick all week or you've been on, you know, out of town all week and here I gave you this weekly allowance and, you know, I didn't even get to go out with you. So it kind of brings a little contention to it, like, a, like just kind of like you feel like you didn't really... I hate to say you didn't get what you paid for, <laughs> but, much, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's too much pressure and expectation. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't hold up so their think, end of the me, arrangement. So I, now I, you know, and to Lily's advice and then to my own too, I just, I just cannot going to put anybody on a weekly allowance unless this is like some long-term arrangement, but not in the beginning. I just, you just, it just doesn't work. I just haven't found it to be very successful. So Emily, what are you looking for now? You're on the site, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, so I'm on, honestly, now I think I'm in a good place career-wise and financially, I kind of just want someone to travel with. Travel? Um, now, what, what do you do for work? <laughs> I work in the fashion industry. I won't specify, but... Yeah. Uh, so I freelance, but here it's very seasonal. So mm-hmm. um, 
during the summers, I don't have much going on. So I kind of want someone to just travel with at this point. Nice. Any specific place you want to go? So with my four year arrangement, we got to travel a bit, went to Dubai, um, Hawaii, the Caribbean. So I kind of want to go somewhere new. I don't know. Maybe I haven't been to, I like Europe. I would like to go to like France, maybe go to Australia. Yeah. Um, it's summer, so maybe Greece. I recommend Perth if you're going to Australia. Yeah. Have you been there? Mm-hmm. Oh. That sounds great. So, and, and you're not going to find a guy on Tinder just to afford all this for you? <laughs> More than likely no, not. Definitely. Yeah. So, Emily, how did you find our podcast? I know you, you messaged me, but how did you find us? So, I actually found you on Spotify uh, and then on the podcast app. Um, I was just looking, I just typed in Sugar Daddy podcast and there was like, I think yours came up first and then there was a couple others. Yeah. But the other ones were kind of just like rambling and yours was more interesting because you're a guy and you're a sugar daddy. It's the only one like it in the world, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys are funny and easy to talk, like to listen to and talk to, I guess. So, you know, it's very entertaining and you have good guests. So it's fun. Now, how long ago did you find us? Have you listened to every episode? Yeah. So I found you guys like a month or two ago and I just like binge watched all of them. Oh, you <laughs> binge? Well, I mean, we're at like 40 something episodes. That's a lot of hours. Yeah. Well, I would like listen to it in the car. Yeah. In traffic, or at the gym. <laughs> there you go. It's fun. It's really interesting. The key is the guests. We interview sugar daddies. We interview sugar babies. We bring on people that actually aren't in the sugar bowl maybe some like men's coaches or a therapist or things like that. What, what do you find the most interesting? What, what do you, what are you getting the most out of the podcast? I like hearing the girl's side, to be honest, um, yeah. just cause I can relate to them. Like I relate to Amy a lot and the ones that you had was it Kimmy with the toxic relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, like she was very relatable. So I loved hearing her, her story. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, being in it for so many years, it's nice to, hear other girls stories because I don't have friends to like chat about this with, you know? Mm-hmm. So do you, do you have friends that are on the site? I don't just the friend that I met through it. Yeah. Does um, your, fam- I have a friend that I told to get on and she had told me she had been on it and oh. I was shocked. I was like, what? Wait, you know you've been on there? Been on there, but she said, she know, never had any luck so she got off right away like yeah. i tried it like three times and it was horrible <laughs> yeah so does your family know does my family know yeah yeah they do because the the long-term arrangement i had you know i was traveling abroad a lot um, so i kind of just came out with it yeah and was like hey you know i website i met this guy and you know i'm traveling and doing this and this Right. Just because I couldn't really hide it. I'm like on <laughs> social media, like, hey, I'm in another country. <laughs> yeah. I'm on a helicopter. Yeah. Where did you find this rich guy flying you everywhere? Yeah. It's, it starts getting kind of obvious now, when there's a 30 now, year age difference. Yeah, exactly. Now I just say, oh, you know, I met them at a bar. <laughs> right, right. At a bar or through a mutual friend. That's always a good one. Because if you if somebody asks where you met yeah. and you said oh a mutual There's friend a that's, yeah it's kind of the end of story right I do actually have a crazy story that I wanted to share yeah um, more crazy stories from this one's probably the craziest oh and scariest so well, we've been waiting for this one <laughs> so I flew to Puerto Rico to meet this guy and he was like just come meet me for the weekend so I flew out we had a great time he was super friendly and um, you know we went hiking and we got an airbnb and we had a good time but while i was in puerto rico i had these missed calls from a, a number and it was a lady and she was leaving me voicemails saying that she was with the fbi and i was like freaking out and i was like this has to be a scam or something so i deleted the messages so i come back to town and my mom tells me that someone passed by the house looking for me saying that they're with the fbi and I was like, what? <laughs> I had these voicemails. I was freaking out. So I called the number back. And she, you know, she uh, told me she was with them and to call this number to verify who she was. And I said, okay, great. And she's like, well, I have some questions to ask you about this guy that you might have met on a dating site. And she said that he was on like Tinder, on Bumble, and that he was also on Speaking. And I was like, shit. <laughs> I know he's from there because I don't meet people from Tinder or Bumble. 
so she's like, let's meet at a, at a Starbucks. You can come to the office here. She's like, I'm going to be in Florida this weekend. So I'm like, okay. And she's like, I've been meaning to call you for a month now, but I, I haven't been in Florida. So she's in Florida. So she, I, I say, okay, let's meet at this Starbucks. I'll be in that area today. So we go meet at the Starbucks and she's there with like her partner and they show me like their credentials and I was freaking out and I had just started getting back with my ex. So I was calling him freaking out. <laughs> He's like, don't worry, you just go and it'll be fine. Um, don't worry, I'll, I'll help you with whatever. So it turned out they were looking for somebody who I had exchanged numbers with on the site uh, maybe like two years ago because it was my old phone number. And he had my number saved on his phone and they like they had found his phone uh, and they, they couldn't specify why they were looking for him it's something to do with sex trafficking and minors uh, that's all they could tell me what? and so but my number was saved on his phone um and they didn't have our conversations because we spoke through whatsapp but it had like the, the chat and with my name and so they showed me his pictures and like all the aliases he went by and i was like okay well i just by looking at his picture i'm like i can tell you i would have never met him and I remember everybody I've met and I haven't met him or, and I don't remember any of these names and they're like okay so I couldn't really help them but they told me that they met a few girls a few girls already from the site that had been in contact with him and they were just looking for him basically wow and they were like well nice cool story to tell <laughs> yeah I mean and we specify that all the time to be very careful I know that a lot of times we use secondary numbers or burner phones or burner numbers and we do use aliases because you know sometimes we don't need that person knowing our real name but once you kind of get to know them a little bit you got to dive deeper because there's there are some shady people out there and and as you found out this guy was wanted by the fbi so and yeah. he was on the site yeah yeah, that is crazy. Yeah, if you have the ability to do a background check, do one for sure. It's I hard. Had, it's hard. I but. had a friend of mine do a background check on an essay guy for me, and it turned out he'd been arrested for DUI multiple times. He had a domestic violence charges against him, all kinds of things. And wow. so I ended up not meeting the guy. Yeah. Well, that was lucky. Yeah. Probably. more than More than likely, that was very fortunate. I think so. Yeah. All right, Emily, anything else that you want our listeners to know there from Miami, Florida about uh, sugar dating? And (laughs) I'm I'm assuming that you'll continue forward with it. You enjoy it? I do. I've had good experiences on there. I can say, you know, they've all been bad. And I've gotten travel to a lot of cool places with different people. And, you know, I think there are a lot of great guys on there. You have to just find them. Yeah. Yeah, we, we talk so much about the diamonds that are on the site, both men and women, there's a lot of great people. There's men who can afford you a lifestyle that, that uh, you can't even imagine, but there's a lot of bullshit on there. And how do you get through the bullshit, right? You just got to dig through it, be smart, don't be stupid. And you're going to, you're going to find success there. Yeah. I think it all just comes with experience. So I think once you kind of get the hang of it, it's easier to navigate through the site. Well, Emily, I really appreciate you taking some time and sharing your sugar dating stories. Those were really good. You told us about a billionaire that was on the site. I mean, you're just not going to meet a billionaire on Tinder. (laughs) It's just not going to (laughs) happen. Swipe right on a billionaire, right? And have him match with you. That's pretty crazy. Lily, thanks for uh, co-hosting today. I appreciate it. We'll see more of you. My pleasure. And uh, hey, if you want to share your crazy sugar dating stories, go to our website like Emily did. And send me a message at secretsofasugardaddy.com. And you can also follow us on Instagram. I get messages there also. And if you go to our website, actually, we have some good links there. Uh, One is to OMGS. It will teach you all the great ways on how to pleasure a woman. I showed showed Lily that site this morning. And she was uh, pretty impressed, a little shocked on how realistic it was and how interactive it was. But um, it's good, right? It's very professionally done. It is. It yeah, is. I, I recommend it. I need to spend some time alone on there because it's <laughs> awkward yeah. looking at it with you. <laughs> and uh, also, too, you can uh, click on the seeking.com web, uh, web link on our website, and that way they'll know where you came from. So we appreciate you guys clicking on those links and exploring those options. All right. Until next episode. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us. 
If you'd like to connect or even be on the show, we'd love to hear from you at secretsofasugardaddy.com. 